Hey everyone, welcome to Meeple Bits. Thanks for joining me today. In today's episode of Tabletop Simulator, we're going to go through the game Splendor. This one is titled in the Steam Workshop Splendor Scripted, authored by Jug Pug. I probably brutaled that, but you guys should have no trouble finding this one. And as always, links are going to be in the description below. So stay tuned as we go through uh, this version of Tabletop Simulator and Splendor to give you an idea of what the players have to do and what's scripted and done for you. Keep in mind, this is not the official DLC version of Splendor. This is a free version in the workshop. So stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome back to Tabletop Simulator and Splendor. So I'm here with my table mate and we are ready to dive in and show you how to use this workshop add-on for your next game night. So to begin, I'm going to first address the different components available in this particular version and what's on the table. There's a rule book available on the left side of the table. You will need to kind of pivot move your camera though to read through it. And then of course, hold your alt key or zoom in. There's the three decks of cards the different noble tiles, a counter for each of the uh, gems that you're paying for during uh, your turn, a counting bowl, a pay button, and then some quick, uh, a quick reference card as far as what this bowl is for. So this one in particular, when you're ready to pay for a card on your turn to build, you're going to drop the gems into the counting bowl. It's going to show all players that you've paid the correct cost, and then you're going to select that pay button. But those are the different elements. So let's go ahead and give this a test drive and show you what's scripted and what you as players are gonna have to do manually on your turn. So to begin, select your name in the upper right hand corner. Select color, which is gonna give positions available around the table. I'll choose red this time. Once all players have been seated, you're ready for setup. And that's one of the very few things in this version that are scripted. And I'm gonna go through that in just a moment, but once you're ready, click Setup. It's going to select the number of nobles that should be available in accordance to the number of players that are at the table. It's gonna then deal out the number of cards on each uh, tier, and then remove the number of gems in accordance to the number of players seated at the table. And then you're ready to begin. It did say who's first, and you'll see here that it chose my table mate as the first player. So on your turn, as you know, you're going to select either three gems of one color, or sorry, three gems of different colors, two gems of one color, or select a card from here and a gold, if available, to then put into your archive. So for player one, let's go ahead and show uh, the users how to do an archive. So you're going to grab a card, drag it into your hand, and remember, your hand being that box that's only visible and available to you. That way, it's hidden from the rest of the players in view. Now, this version will not cap you at three cards like the rules, so you're going to have to pay attention to that. Now, next, the player is going to need to take their gold in accordance to what they've selected. And then this is where it gets, again, a little unscripted. So I'm OK with it because it does add a little bit of interactivity. So once your turn is complete, a player at the table is then going to need to select a card to replace back into the table. So that can really be anyone around the table. So you pick the card, selecting the F key to flip it over, and then drop it where it belongs. And now it's going to be my turn. So what you'll see here is that my table mate drug a card into their hand like so just to kind of give you an idea of it's being hidden from all other players except for yourself. And out here, it's in view. So on my turn, I'm going to go ahead and pick one of three colors. Now, here's another thing that's going to be important to note about this particular version of Splendor, is that when you stack gems, they do not count. So for this version, it's going to be very important that if you were to say select two of one color, you kind of offset them a little bit so you can quickly see how many you have. Because if you grab a token and stack it on top of one another, without really zooming in and then seeing multiple ones there, it's going to be really tough. 
mousing over does not show you a total count. So keep that in mind as you're selecting and placing the different gems. So that'll be my turn. Now it's time for my table mate to go. They could purchase any of the tier ones to give you an idea of how the counting bowl works. So let's say they wanted to build, um, for example, oh wait, no, we would need more stuff to be able to do that. Sorry guys. Um, but let's say they wanted to build this one in particular. So they would select that down here and pay its cost of four uh, of these. But let's just say they happen to have all these sapphires in their hand. Like most scripting, you're still going to need to grab all of these gems, drop them into the counting bowl, so you could do it one at a time, or if you prefer, just mouse over to grab all of them. <laughs> now, once you've dropped them into the bowl, it's going to tally up all the sapphire and the gold that was put in there, which covers the cost of this particular build, then selecting the pay button is going to then put all those gems back into their respective stacks. And like before, you must then manually select the next card. So that's it guys. You're gonna have to do a lot of the work on your own because the main things that are scripted in this particular version is going to be the setup in accordance to the number of players at the table and then dropping in the countering bowl and then paying their costs so that all players can see uh, that the player has paid its tally. So once a player reaches 15 victory points, you'll notice there isn't anything around the table that's actually keeping track of the total number of victory points. So if I had this in my hand, there's nothing saying that I've now got two victory points as an example. So you'll need to keep track of total victory points for victory as well as any of these noble tiles that you've met their conditions for to then bring into your hand, which also count for victory points. So that's gonna do it for this episode of Tabletop Simulator, guys. Thanks for joining me for this version of Splendor. If you have any questions about this particular version, please leave a comment below. I'm happy to answer that for you. Um, if you have any suggestions about other games that you want me to kind of demo and go through of what's scripted and what's not, I'm happy to, uh, to take suggestions as well. Um, you know, if you enjoyed the content and happened upon this video and you, uh, you liked the video, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. But until next time, guys, thanks so much for watching.